Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ, Bless, Captain Palu here with 15s with the Captains. All right, today, today's topic is called the enabler. All right, the enabler. Your peers is your downfall. And what do I mean by that? Uh, a lot of times, I've seen this numerous times where somebody get put out the body, right? Somebody get put out the body. They've done some things. And it be that, that, that one or two people. You know what I mean? The the you know the scripture says, give me give me uh Romans sixteen, please. Give me Romans the sixteenth chapter. When they create offenses and they get put out the body, it's for a reason. And it be those friends that go up to them and still deal with them. Don't allow them to go out there and feel ashamed of what they've done. You are an enabler. You are stopping their progression. All right. They can't get over what they've getting over because they got somebody to lean on to talk all type of wickedness or whatever the case may be. All right. To justify their point for why they did it. You begin to enable that person and you, 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 you're hindering them to come back and grow. All right. Read that. Romans chapter 16. Give me the verse 17. This is the book of Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions mm -hmm. and offenses, contrary to the doctrine, doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So it says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses, all right? It said, contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. That's there for a reason. Avoid them. All right. They've been put out for a reason, not to destroy them, but they've been put out because they need to learn their lesson. And when you come like, OK, when people get put out of the body, they have somebody like a point of contact, right? A point of contact to keep constant communication to show, OK, them, they trying to get themselves together. We don't want anybody just to be out there by themselves. All right. But we got people set in place to deal with that brother or that sister. All right, when they've fallen. We've all fallen. We got somebody to deal with that person. But when you go back and you're not telling, you're not correcting that person. It need to be strictly business when somebody get put out the body and you see them. How you, how's everything going? You getting your stuff together? It need to be business. Y'all be going over their house, kicking, laughing in their face, hanging out like nothing happened. You're destroying that soul. You are hindering from them to grow. I'm telling you. Matter of fact, that's hatred. You hate your brother. You're keeping your brother in the midst of the same wickedness they got put out from. Because you don't want to stop dealing with them and let them take their correction so they can grow from it. Matter of fact, give me, give me Leviticus 19. Give me Leviticus 19, the 17th chapter. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Come on. Thou shalt not hate thine brother in thine heart. It said you shouldn't hate your brother in your heart. Don't hate your brother, all right? You're supposed to be doing what? Correcting your brother if they're in the midst of, if they're wrong, uh, period. If they have any offenses, you correct your brother. You're supposed to be there. You're supposed to be that person to build that person up. But a lot of times, y'all hate your brother. Y'all won't allow your brothers and sisters to grow. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Come on. And not suffer sin upon him. You're not supposed to suffer sin upon them, all right? So what you're doing is, like I said, you're the enabler. You are destroying them, and you don't even know it, all right? You got to give these people time to get themselves together because otherwise you're going to destroy them, all right? You think, you think you're doing a good work, but you're destroying these people. All right. That's a hatred spirit because you ain't listening to what nobody said. I'm telling you, you say, listen, leave them alone. They, they out. They out the body. They did these offenses. They out. Leave them alone. They have a point of contact. But you next thing you know, the next day you over their house hanging out with them. You know what I mean? You out doing all types of crazy things. You out drinking with them. You out doing all this crazy wickedness with this person. And you ain't you ain't no correction. You hate your brother. And what did the scripture say about you hating your brother? You're a murderer. Matter of fact, get that. Give me uh, 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 15. You're a murderer when you do that, man. 
You see, if you love your brother, you allow that brother or that sister to get the proper correction so they can come back stronger. But when you go over there and you acting like nothing happened, you know what I mean? You start listening to how they feel about, oh, you feel like like uh, they was done wrong and all this stuff, and you start to feed into that. You start to feed into that, and you don't correct them up behind it. You are a murderer. You got a hatred spirit on you, all right? And you enabling that person. You got it? This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 15. Come on. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So if you hate your brother, you have a murderous spirit on you, straight up, all right? You have to let things happen. This is the most high. This is in the scriptures for a reason for people to get put out the body, all right? It's for a reason, all right? So don't go over there and try to act like everything is good and you ain't building that person up. You ain't, you ain't going over no scriptures. You ain't doing none of that to, to build the person up. You going over there to have fun, play video games, drinking, doing whatever it is, and they think it's okay. They think what they've done ain't nothing or I'll be back, whatever. You enabling that person and you going to pay for that. You going to pay for that because when they continue, ultimately, it's their fault. You know what I mean? They allowing it to happen. You know, of course, they're not strong enough to even say, you know what? You need to get away. You know what I mean? You need to go away, man. I need to be, I need to be alone and get myself together. I ain't seen that yet. But so that means a lot of these people ain't strong enough to be able to do that. But, you know, they should be. You know what I mean? They should be like, you know what? I'm going to accept what I'm going through. And I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, I'm gonna take my correction how I need to be. You know, I got a point of contact, and I'm gonna build myself up. I'm gonna come back stronger. But when you come in there and you enable that spirit, man, you destroy that spirit. You could potentially destroy their whole household. All right, read it again. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Come on. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Right. Give me, give me um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. I'm telling you, man, stop doing that. Stop enabling these people. Stop stunting these people's growth. Yeah, they screwed up. Give them time to come back and get themselves together. They're supposed to feel ashamed. They're supposed to feel hurt. All right? But when you go in there and you try to, you know, act like nothing happened, you know, you're not trying to build this person up, man, and you just you just over there enabling them, acting like things is good. You're destroying that spirit, man. We got I see this too often. You know, we we tell them all the time, leave them alone, leave them alone, let them let them get themselves together, and it always be that person. You know, that friend shit. What what they be saying that friendship? You say it's friendship. If you was a real friend, you'll let that person go through those trials and those tribulations, so they can get stronger later on. But no, you don't want to deal with that. You think you know better, but you got that. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter five and verse eleven. Come on, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Come on, but rather reprove them. Can we do what? Reprove them. You need to be reproving them. Like I said, it need to be about business. If it's something that's going on, say, for instance, you ran into them at the store or whatever, you run past them. I'm not saying don't talk to them. I ain't saying no evil stuff like that. You see your brother, your sister, they've been put out. You say, hey, listen, hi, Shalom, how you doing? Everything good? But it need to be business. It need to be, hey, you getting yourself together? Everything straight? All right? Are you kicking that, are you kicking that sin? It need to be business. Period. Not man, what you doing tonight? Oh, we gonna we gonna we got game night tonight? Or what we drinking tonight? We gonna we gonna we gonna have a couple. Of, no, they ain't what you do. You're destroying it. You you keeping that spirit the same. All right, they're not gonna correct themselves if they feel like everything is still the same. You need to be reproving that person. It says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Come on. For it is a shame to even speak of those things Come on. which are done of them in secret. Come on. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Come on. For whatso whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So we listen, if we ain't reproving, you know, let them let this let that stuff happen, all right? These people get put out the body. Yeah, we have somebody put in place. We don't want them to be out there in the first place. 
You know what I mean? We don't want our brothers and sisters to be put out the body. But when that happens, it's for them to get themselves together. We got to allow them to get themselves together. You know what I mean? So we can't go and, and, and act like nothing happened. All right? Like things is all good. I'm telling you, you're crippling those people. You're destroying them. You're stunting their growth. All right? Sometimes these people don't come back from that. You know what I mean? They continue to think everything is all right because people come around them like nothing happened. And they never fix that sin, man. And I won't say never, but it's hard for them to fix that sin. All right? They keep doing it over and over again because the same people is in their ear enabling them. Stop being an enabler, all right? And stop allowing these people to, to come around you when you're trying to get yourself together because your peers could be your downfall, all right? All right, that's it for this uh, 15 Minutes with the Captains. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Stop being a dang enabler, man. Stop doing that because you're ruining these people. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today.